Uh, the first session of today, uh, and we're really looking forward to this one, is all about how abandoned carts can make or break your event. So I'll pass you over to Andreas Rumikis from Event Force. Thank you for the introduction, Craig. Um, let me just get this presentation up and going. Good morning, everybody. Bright and early. Thank you so much for joining us. I uh, appreciate there's a lot going on today with uh, different sessions and content, so really um, great to have your attention here for the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, and it's uh, quite poignant since we will be talking all about attentions and how that influ uh, influences abandoned um, cards. So let's kick off with this poor abandoned card. Um, purchasing online has become common practice. Um, we used to buying things, sometimes only with a couple of clicks. Um, and it's no news to anybody that e-commerce is probably one of the biggest uh, pieces of the online um, business these days. Now, many would argue that this is really all ushered in by the COVID-19 pandemic, but we also know this is very much part of a bigger trend that has um, been about for a while. It's just been accelerated by COVID rather than brought in by it. And this some good reasons for it. Um, you know, we prefer doing things in the comfort of our own homes from our own devices. Um, we don't need to get ready or dressed to go out to the physical store. Um, the goods and items are well so stocked and displayed and well, if they're not, I guess uh, that can make a break an online business. So I'm sure we've all been in the position where we were planning on buying something and then suddenly we actually changed our minds. So whatever reason that might cause us to do that. Um, statistically, um, and this is actually the latest from salescycle.com, 81% of retail shoppers actually end up abandoning their purchases after adding items to their cart. Um, now, over a third of us would actually do that because the online retailer is pushing us towards creating an online account. So we're all very careful with our data, and that is an, an extra step that n many of us apparently don't really have um, will or desire for. So attention span. I mentioned earlier what this has to do with abandoned carts. Um, first of all, um, we should really mention a very interesting detail. Some of you may know this or not. Uh, in the last uh, couple of decades, actually between 2000 and 2015, um, our attention spans have shrunk by quarter. Um, and be honest, no judgment, no pointing fingers, but how many of you have already looked at your devices since we started this session? And that's okay. We know that this is what we live in, in, and I'm constantly competing as a presenter and as a speaker with those um, second screens that you have in your pockets all the time. So that is totally normal. Um, we're actually now lagging behind a humble goldfish in terms of our attention span. Um, attention span being ability to concentrate on a task or object. Um, for a period of time, so goldfish attention span is actually um, nine seconds, whereas ours is eight seconds. So, and unfortunately, things are not going to get any better. So, 7% of us forget our birthdays, apparently. I know, sad crowd. Uh, with Gen Z, it's even worse. So, a quarter of Gen Z has actually um, tend to forget major details of their uh, close relatives. And Workers, all of us, I guess, check our inboxes on average 30 times an hour. So we have constant flow of information, and obviously our time and attention is limited to what we can devote um, to different tasks. So we used to compete on content, and now everybody as content producers um, competes on time and, at and attention. So all these hours and maybe sometimes days of creating uh, content for your online, for your marketing campaign, for your event promotion, well, unfortunately, only about 20% of it actually gets read these days. So just to illustrate that a little bit, this is one of my favorite quotes. I let it. I let you read this uh, for yourselves. Um, if I had a dollar for every time I got distracted. I wish I had some ice cream. So 
even in this one sentence, the unknown author obviously had a lapse of attention. And you know your target audience, you believe you know how to capture their attention, uh, how to engage with them, but when you consider that you're basically selling to a goldfish, I'm sure that puts completely different perspective on things. So we've all heard already before that in the retail industry, 81% um, of us abandon our purchases um, without completing them. So why would it be any different in the events world? Um, and abandoned registration pages are really no different to abandoned carts in e-commerce. And this is what we're going to um, dwell into um, a little bit further in the next um, 20 minutes or so. So now, we also mentioned previously that a third of us will actually discontinue our purchase process because we're being asked to create an account. The image that you see in front of you, it is really only too familiar in the events world, unfortunately. Again, not about naming or shaming anybody here. This is actually a real uh, screen grab from a, from a real event organizer. And in fact, um, many of our customers, w before they start working with us, they come with us with exactly this problem as their starting position. Um, so I will let you draw your own conclusions of how you think this might be impacting your overall registration rates. So let's mix things up a little bit. Um, I would be really interested with all of that in mind to see um, who is responsible for organizing events within your organizations here in the audience. Um, so this is really a quick 30-second um, snap poll. Um, if you would point your uh, smartphone cameras towards this QR code, it should bring, in, bring up your um, question that it would be great to see your answers on. Okay, I'm not sure this is bringing them up. Um, uh, let me see if we have an idea of where the polls are going. That's great. Events and marketing, so we have a split. Thank you so much. Um, we have a split. Um, a third of you say that it's events, and a third of you say that it's marketing. And really, um, you know, we can see that the events is firmly nowadays in the hands of marketing. And this is really by no means a surprise to any of us. We've actually seen this a um, beautiful convergence of events and marketing um, teams, um, especially in the last few years. And you know, nowadays events and marketing go hand in hand. Um, event planners will seek to ensure they have the desired number of registrations while the uh, marketing teams will actually look um, and scrutinize the return on very significant inve event investment um, that uh, quite often is involved with putting, up an, putting on an event. So um, whether event planning sits in marketing or with an event team, um, successful event is not only about actual outstanding event itself, um, it's about pre, during and post event um, communication with your attendees and how you engage with your audiences. So we won't really go into uh, too much detail of why events are important. I'm sure all of you in this world know this only too well, but a couple of highlights here in terms of um, key um, factors or key drivers while why the events are being um, organized. Um, so 65% of event marketers say that the primary reason is brand awareness for the company and products. And events marketing really allows company to interact with potential customers in a very different way, which is particularly relevant to all the digital companies out there that otherwise might not have any physical touch points. So think about it or a, a little bit as a, a pop-up shop in the retail world. So it really gives your um, 
customers or your, your prospects an opportunity to really interact with a brand in a way that quite often is not possible in the digital world for digital first companies. Um, obviously, networking comes um, as, as part of that um, because guess what? People talk about events, people love, um, you know, whether it's consumers, customers, media, bystanding, bystanders, everybody talks about the great event that they just attended. Um, and they talk about it in person, on social media, in the press, you name it. So really, it allows you to expand that educational component of the events as well. So you really um, are educating, in many cases, the market or the segment. And actually, as it happens, a, a great benefit of that, that you also get an opportunity to sell um, your services or products on the side. Now, 93% of marketers uh, believe that in-person events provide attendees with valuable opportunity uh, to form connections. So really, the engagement with customers and uh, communicating product and service information is uh, critical in all of this equation as well, and ultimately, 95 of marketers believe that um, events, in-person events, can really help to achieve major uh, objectives, and one of them being lead generation. So, in most cases, events are being organized because of the overarching aim to generate leads, uh, along as other. Um, items which we spoke about just now, brand awareness, networking, education, and all the rest. Um, so if you really think about this core objectives of organizing the event, if you think about the cost involved in organizing the event, and if you think about the efforts that go into promoting an event, and if you consider that your incomplete registration forms are actually equal the abandoned carts, what impact do you think incomplete registration forms have on your overall success and the ROI of the event? So with that in mind, um, we'll find a way to see the results of this. It would be great to get another quick snap um, poll of the audience to see, in your opinion, what are the main factors that uh, affect the event registration's success or the lack of success of event registration. So if you could point your smartphone cameras at the screen and the QR code again, um, and let's see what the audience thinks about that. So I'll just give 30 seconds for you to do that. I think there's a couple of questions there. And let's see what the results are. Awareness, awareness, priorities, dates, venues, content, business conflict, COVID, budget, lots of different reasons. Um, really interesting. Thank you for sharing those. Um, awareness, I think, is one of them that you talk about. And um, actually, it's it's really great segue into this next part of, of my um, today's presentation that I wanted to talk about is the creativity that we're seeing in this industry and in this sector over the last, you know, especially over the last couple of years, I would say a real explosion, uh, whether or not that's brought on with uh, marketing getting more and more involved in the events, whether or not, um, you know, I think we can leave that discussion perhaps for another time, but really since the first social media platform uh, that was born in 1997. None of us can stop scrolling. Um, half of the world population has at least one social media account, so it's kind of a big deal. And you know, we used to be of a thinking that uh, channels like TikTok, for example, is all for you know uh, targeting Gen Z uh, generations. And now we know that actually that's no longer the case. Different demographics also are um, having a go and trialing these platforms. And also, we used to think that. LinkedIn, for instance, is really the only channel for B2B. And again, that's no longer the case. So the world of social media has sort of turned around how we can raise that awareness for your events, which obviously you um, described as being a challenge. Um, but one thing we know already, that you can organize the best event, create the perfect agenda, choose the most unique location. And just because you have all of these ingredients, it doesn't yet mean that your attendees will actually come, it doesn't yet mean that the attendees will actually um, register. Um, 
And there are some reasons um, behind this, actually. If you look at it in the sort of you know, technical marketing sense, your blog posts, social media marketing, webinars, all of these activities that you do to create the awareness and to raise the awareness within your target audiences, they actually sit within top of the marketing funnel. So that means that at that point, your aim is really to create that awareness, to capture as wide audience as possible um, and get as many leads as possible. Now, that doesn't mean that at that point you qualify the leads. It doesn't yet mean that they're ready to purchase something from you. You just engage with them um, sort of in a creative way and attract and got their attention. But this is, you know, again, from marketing funnel point of view, this is just uh, the first step. You also have the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel. So for the middle of the funnel, um, you know, your uh, audiences already have are sort of warmed up. They have a purchased intent. Um, so you target them with, um, they're ready to evaluate your event value proposition. So you target them with um, case studies, um, email marketing, um, you know, and similar other relevant tactics. But again, they actually, your audiences are not yet purchasing at that point. The purchase is happening at the bottom of the funnel. Um, and one of the key tactics uh, within the bottom of the funnel in the e-commerce world and in the online world is actually shopping carts. So this is where your registration, event registration comes in. Um, and we know that you know, with, uh, you know, even if your um, event page is really well optimized, only one in eight uh, event page visitors will actually complete your registration. Um, and if you're not as, as perhaps advanced as having optimized it, it might be one out of 20. So think about the numbers that you need to get into your website in order for, for you to start converting the numbers that you're expecting. So even relatively small numbers, if you move you know, from one in 20 to one in 15, even that can have a big impact. And if you go to one in five, well, you're laughing your way to the bank, I guess, and you know, you'll be loved by all of your stakeholders by providing great ROI and filling your event. So, the conversion happens at the bottom of the funnel, but I think we all know this guy, the conversion killer. And again, you know, this is you know, a quite specific marketing term, but we really have to be aware of this and we really have to address this, ad address this in the today's digital world. So um, conversion killers are basically any unnecessary steps that your attendee or anybody purchasing anything online would be subjected to whilst they complete their purchase. So there is a reason why all the um, online businesses, whether it's hospitality, whether it's e-commerce or whatever it might be, everybody's obsessed about one-click purchase. How many of you have had an impulsive purchase in the last couple of weeks that you just randomly ended up buying something just because it's convenient? And there is a real disconnect between this trend that has been around in the e-commerce world for a really long time and events. If you look at the events world, if you look at the um, online registration journeys that most of your events will be asking you to complete, sometimes you need to set half an hour aside to just provide the information that somebody's asking you to do. Now, um, we actually ran a survey recently um, on LinkedIn um, a, a very quick, simple poll checking in with people, what do they use for event registrations? And actually, many people, I think more than half or nearly half, were using um, spreadsheets for the event registrations. Now, I'm going to leave it to you to decide what impact you think this has on the overall conversion rates. But if we take everything into consideration that we've just spoken about in the last 15 minutes or so, well, I would suggest that that's definitely not uh, helping you to fill those rooms if this is the uh, technology that you deploy. So really, that means that no matter how creative you get with promoting events, to a lot of your points, raising awareness, which you think is an obstacle, no matter how much you raise that awareness, uh, no matter how appealing you make um, you know, the, the, the content and how hard you work to getting the right audiences, really, if you make it really difficult for them to convert, well, that is your answer whilst the, while, while, um, why you may not be reaching the numbers that you need for your event. So, um, 
using social media, just a really quick um, list here, which I'm sure many of you will know already if, since you engaged in promoting your events on social media. Um, it's really important to have a plan, and I'm sure all of you have plans um, of how you create um, content, how you get people engaged on social media. But really just um, you know, spending money and energy on marketing an event without much thought what comes next, it's all a bit pointless. So you really need to have a very solid plan and effective um, social media strategy will involve connecting with your followers before, during, and after events. So that continuous communication is really important. Um, so let's look at some uh, top tips of what we can do to increase the registrations. And a lot of this is really adopted from best practices in the online digital sales world, um, e-commerce businesses and the likes. So personalization is really the top of the list. Um, these days you can connect your CRM and ensure that um, you know who is in your event page. So you can, you know, if somebody lands on your event page, you can already pre-populate the registration form with their details, make it really, really easy for them to do that. Um, I'm sure, um, you know, all of us have been in the situations before where we were about to purchase something and we didn't complete that step and then we received a reminder saying, you know, come back, here's a little discount if you use it by the end of the day, by the end of the week, whatever it might be. So anything to prompt that, uh, that, that would be a great help in improving your conversion rates. Um, and speed, site speed is a, a critical component in that as well. Uh, remember the duration of our attention span these days, we're talking about eight seconds also. So if you only have eight seconds attention speed and your page is loading for 10 seconds, well, you're not going to have patience for that, clearly. So follow-ups is another um, really interesting and, and important element in this mix. Uh, ensuring that you're reminding your target uh, customers and target attendees to register, you incentivize them. Uh, and incentivizing might not be just about offering something. It could be educational purposes. It could be other reasons why the attendees are, um, uh, why attendance might be in their interest. Um, I recently had an had a experience myself where I was following a huge uh, global summit uh, in the e-commerce um, online digital uh, world, uh, and they actually started following me with retargeting with a buy to buy one, get two um, offer um, by the end of the month. And needless to say, my business case is now with my line manager who is evaluating if we should go there or not. So sometimes you just need that little extra push and a little extra trigger. And there's a few other items on here that I should mention as well. Uh, you can embed your iframes or WordPress widgets within your existing site. Um, and designing custom URL really helps to have that smooth transition. So couple of examples here. Um, one of our customers, uh, Discover LA, they're driving their um, registrations to their events directly through their site via integrated WordPress form, um, uh, which you can see on there. And then another one is um, American Express Global Business Travel. Their meetings and events are, are hosting an annual uh, event in Houston, actually just happening this week. And a couple of things that really stand out in this is one, you will see the custom URL right at the top, which really ensures that consistency in brand experience. And you have the urgency prompter right at the bottom um, right hand side, which again is just kind of helping us to make that decision. Um, and then last step, just very quickly, groups. Have you, if you register multiple attendees in one ticket for your events, and we just spoke about how important it is to get rid of conversion killers, imagine if you multiply that by five or by ten, if you have a group of five or ten people. So don't ask the group organizers to use more time than they absolutely have to. Make it as easy as possible. This is one example of one of our customers. They are, they are in eSports world. They're allowing group uh, organizer to book multiple tickets just in one go. So really, just to, uh, just to recap, um, we've seen 
how our attention spans have been shrinking. We've seen what impact it has on the online, in the online world uh, within cart abandonment. Um, and your events are no different, so you really have to not just focus on the top of the funnel, but focus also at the bottom of the funnel so that um, you give the best opportunity for those attendees that already are interested in your content to make their lives really easy and convert and register for your attendees. So we know that event planners are unsung heroes of the organizations. Um, come and visit us at stand B6, which is right there. And we're actually running a uh, survey, um, so we want to hear the voices of the industry and uh, your opinions and have great, cool water bottles to reward you with. So thank you so much for your time. If anybody has any questions, um, I'd love to take them for the next couple of minutes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, really amazing insight there. Um, as I mentioned right at the start, there is a, a Glisser link if you want to raise any questions. Um, I, also, I can kind of come around and, uh, and give you a microphone. Um, the first one that came through on Glisser, uh, it's a really interesting kind of point. Do you think there's differences in um, the different types of events in relation to cart abandonment? So um, thinking maybe business conferences or uh, music festivals, do they um, see the same sorts of issues and are there different things that organizers can do to, to kind of tackle them? There, there is probably a slight difference and obviously the biggest one would be, you know, that normally if we go to B2B events, the content is the driver, the networking is the driver. If we feel we have to be there, I guess we will be more inclined to go through the whatever process there is to register. But don't forget that we were talking earlier in the previous slides that especially when it comes to Gen Z generation, they have even less of attention spans than any of us um, have. So, you know, if you want to be fully inclusive, you have to really think about the digital registration journey for everybody, not just hoping that just because the content is there, somebody will be willing to complete that process. But clearly there is, uh, you know, a difference in terms of, you know, you know festivals as, you know, the, que the, the, the question is put there um, that will have different expectation and perhaps much stricter criteria on, the, on conversions, yes. Amazing, thank you very much. Did anyone else in, in sat down have a question at all? No? Okay, well, thank you very much. All that remains is to say uh, thank you very much to Andreas and uh, congratulations. As he said, they're on the stand just around the corner all day.